Because the Chinese Communist Party tends to promote according to seniority, it's possible to see four distinct generations of leadership between 1949 and 2012. However, someone like Deng Xiaoping was also a significant leader under Mao. But it's a useful device in trying to make sense of this period of Chinese history. During this presentation, make notes on the key individuals, events and factors which have shaped Chinese history. Mao Zedong we have met already as leader of the Chinese Communist Party. His ideas dominated until his death in 1976, although there was a period where he stepped back from leadership following the Great Leap Forward. The Cultural Revolution which followed, though, showed his ability to dominate not just the party, but also the country. Liu Shouqi was a significant leader of the Chinese Communist Party. He was a moderniser along with Deng Xiaoping. However, during the Cultural Revolution he became a hate figure and was banished. The poster shows a Chinese worker strangling Liao Shouqi and honouring Mao. Deng Xiaoping was a moderniser within the Chinese Communist Party. However, he lost power during the Cultural Revolution. He returned towards the end of Mao's life and became leader after his death. He led China through a period of economic liberalisation, but he cracked down on the pro-democracy movement and ordered the Tiananmen Square massacre in 1989. Having established the People's Republic of China in 1949, the Communist Party then set about enforcing their control throughout China. This meant getting control of areas like Tibet and Zhangjiang and Guangdong, a traditional Guamindang base, but also enforcing their socialist ideas across the country through land reform. The three anti-movement and five anti-movement were as much about tackling waste, corruption and fraud as they were about enforcing party ideas on the country. The first five-year plan was heavily based upon economic development and heavy industry. This was seen as so successful that the Hundred Flowers campaign was an attempt to allow criticism of the country in order to get rid of corruption. However, this backfired and led to anti-rightist campaign to remove opponents of the party. In 1958, the Great Leap Forward, or the second five-year plan, was set up, and this was an attempt to harness the energy and power of the massive population in China to push forward the economy. The Great Leap Forward was a huge disaster for China economically. The famine of 1958-61, to which the Communist Party refers to as three years of natural disasters, was exacerbated by the agricultural and economic plans put forward. When Peng Duhe spoke against the policies at the Lushan Conference, he was ostracised, and it wasn't until 1961 when that the party started to reverse the economic plans. At this point, Mao retired slightly from politics, but increasingly alarmed at the direction the country was taken, he started to move against those who opposed him. The socialist education movement was an attempt for him to impose his ideas back on China. But because it wasn't that successful, he launched in 1966 the Great Proletarian Cultural Revolution. This was his attempt to stamp his ideology on the country and regain control of the party. Lin Biao, with Mao, launched the Cultural Revolution. He then became Mao's heir apparent. However, he fell from power and was killed in an air crash in suspicious circumstances. During the Cultural Revolution, thousands of young people flocked to Mao and formed themselves into the Red Guard. It was these young people's enthusiasm, not to mention their extremism, that Mao used to seize control and oust any opponents from within the Communist Party and across China. With his position unequivocally secure, Mao was able to then turn on his second command, Lin Biao, in 1971. Mao then reigned supreme until his death in 1976. Following his death, the Gang of Four, which included his ex-wife, tried to seize control of the party. However, they were outmaneuvered by Hua Guofeng. Hua was never seen as much more than a caretaker leader, and it wasn't long before Deng Xiaoping emerged and was able to enforce his ideas of modernization upon the party and the country. Deng Xiaoping's modernization program was based upon opening up the country to foreign investment and also allowing some free enterprise. However, he at no point wanted to loosen the control the party had over the country. The pro-democracy movement continued to grow from 1981, which led eventually to the protests in Tiananmen Square. However, Deng Xiaoping responded violently, sending the troops to massacre the students gathered there. Jiang Zemin succeeded Deng Xiaoping as leader. This was the first peaceful transition of leadership. He added to Deng Xiaoping's theory the three represents theory. Jiang Zemin was in turn succeeded by Hu Jintao. 
His policy drive is called the scientific development concept towards a socialist harmonious society, and in some sense this married Confucianism with Marxism. Hu Jintao was then succeeded in 2012 by Xi Jinping. To return to our overview of events, following the Tiananmen Square massacre in 1989, there was a violent suppression of the pro-democracy movement throughout China. However, Deng Xiaoping and his allies continued to pursue liberal economic policies. In 1990, the Shanghai Stock Exchange was set up. And in 1992, Deng Xiaoping toured southern China in order to push for greater and faster economic reforms. In 1996, China allowed the yuan to be convertible on the current account, and which enabled free flow of money for imports and exports. On his death in 1997, Deng Xiaoping was succeeded by Jiang Zemin, and this was the first peaceful transition of power that China had seen. Following the Tiananmen Square massacre, China had been largely isolated by the Western powers. However, from 1997, they started to rebuild relationships through visits. For example, in 1998, Bill Clinton visited China. And in 2001, China joined the World Trade Organization. In 2000, Jiang Zemin introduced the theory of three represents, and this became eventually the guiding ideology of the CCP by the year 2002. To Jiang Zemin's theory of the three represents, Hu then added the scientific development concept towards a socialist harmonious society. Under Hu Jintao, China continued its economic liberalization. In 2005, the yuan was freed from being pegged to the dollar, so it could float freely within tightly managed bands. By 2007, China had become the world's third largest economy. And when Beijing hosted the Summer Olympic Games in 2008, China showed itself to the world as a modern, prosperous, confident nation. By 2008 then, China had its fourth generation of communist leaders, and while their ideas were very different from Mao, there was both an explicit and implicit veneration of both him and his ideology.